Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. All right, today I'm going to work on my 1973 Camaro, which you can see right behind me. I've been working on it. I've replaced the clutch. I'm going to have a video on, on what I found when I did that. But today I want to adjust the clutch pedal linkage. Now in the service manual, which I have, now in the service manual, which I have right here, uh, it gives a method to adjust the clutch pedal, but it won't work for me because this car has headers. And I'll show you how that makes it impossible to go by what the service manual says. And I'll adjust it in another way. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to adjust this uh, clutch pedal assembly now. First in overview, 1973 Camaro Z28RS. Love this car, I had it since 1982. Love it to death. And I just want to go over how the system works in these older cars. It's different from your modern cars, quite different indeed. So for some of my younger listeners, uh, this will be a bit of an education for you. But it's not complicated, the system is simple. Okay, let's see if I can twist my back into a pretzel and get underneath here. Anyway, for all you youngins who don't understand, this third pedal is the clutch pedal. Okay, you press this down when you want to shift your shifter into a different gear. Okay, so this is the pedal you're going to press when you do that. Okay, so what does this do when you press it? Well, let's take a look here. If I can get underneath here, let's see. Now, can you see this? Okay, this is the clutch pedal. Now, let's see if I can show you here. Okay, there should be a little rubber grommet that should uh, be a brace for it, but I'm missing that, so that's not good. But basically, you can see that you press down this pedal all the way, and it moves a rod. Yep, it just got a rod that moves right through the firewall. Let's see, where's my finger? Yeah, just got a rod, as you can see, as you can see right here, it just moves that rod right through the firewall. See? Okay, so it's a mechanical system. Okay, here we are in the engine bay, and now this is again hard to see because we have the steering column in the way right here. Anyway, it's hard to see here, but the rod comes out and moves a lever. And perhaps I can show that better from down below. Yeah, maybe I will try that from down below. Welcome everybody to the underside of my 1973 Camaro. Okay, uh, let's see if I can make it clear. Okay, you can just see where the rod comes out of the firewall. There's a, a rubber bellows right there. Let's see, can we get closer? Come on, focus. Yes, there's the rubber bellows right there. There's the rod, and it goes to a lever, which is called the Z-bar. Has a lever on one side, a cylinder right there, that goes to another lever pointed there. So all that does is transfer the motion from one rod to another rod that's closer to the motor. So that's your upper rod, that's not adjustable. This is your Z-bar. Because it's sort of, when you look at it when it's out, it's sort of in the shape of a Z, or Z for our my Canadian listeners. So this Z bar, and it's connected to the engine right here. Okay, so when you press the clutch pedal, it moves that rod in, it moves the Z bar, and then moves this rod this way, which moves your clutch fork this way and that will engage and disengage your clutch, which is inside here. Okay, so the reason why you need to adjust it is because you don't want the clutch fork to be resting against the spinning clutch all the time, because that will wear out the throwout bearing, and you don't want that. So you need a little bit of space, a little bit of space. Oh, and this is the spring that returns the clutch fork to its uh, uh, resting position here and so this is where the adjustment is 
in this old car. So it's all mechanical, it's all rods and levers with one spring, and this is the adjustment. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the factory wants you to adjust it and why it won't work if you have headers. These are my beautiful uh, hooker headers. And uh, I'll show you why that won't work and then what I'm going to do to make it work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take off the spring so that I can work with it by hand. And I'm going to loosen this lock nut right here so that this uh, so this rod can be adjusted. The uh, clutch spring comes off pretty easy by hand here. Just pull it out of the hole and then it comes out just like that. I've got the nut loose so we just loosen off our lock nut here and now we can turn we can turn you can see this is actually quite loose already quite loose really and then if necessary we can turn this to get it out of this pocket in the clutch fork but in my case I don't have to I just push it and it's loose it's loose now right now the clutch lever as you can hear from the sound is just on the diaphragm spring of the clutch but you don't want it to ride on that that will cause excessive wear of the throwout bearing so there's a specification for a small amount of free play before it hits the, that. And that is adjusted right here. You have an adjustable rod, you can go in and out, and that's how you do it. And then you have a lock nut right here that locks it in place. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, from the factory, now I can't really show you, I don't think I can. Can I show it to you? Uh, okay, can you see, let's see. Okay, so right there, right there with my fingers pointing, which maybe you can't see. Maybe it's out of focus. I really don't know. Anyway, there's a secondary hole in the lever coming off the Z-bar. You're supposed to take your adjustable rod and take it off of its normal hole, hole that it actually is supposed to go in and insert it into this hole. And then you put it in place, which is, there it is, in place. It's sort of uh, got a point that is in a, a bit of a cup on the uh, the lever here that goes to your throw out bearing. Now that is where you take out all place so that it is resting on the clutch fingers. So you're supposed to adjust this rod to the length so that all play is gone from the system and this lever has a throw bearing pressing directly on the diaphragm fingers of the clutch. Then with all free play removed, you then lock this into place and then you remove it from that hole and then put it in the hole that it would normally go into, which is at the end of the lever. Okay, so that's the factory method. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna work because the headers interfere with me putting this adjustable rod in its secondary hole. There's very tight room here. These are hooker ceramic coated headers, very nice, still shiny after all these years, but they do interfere with that adjustment. So what are you gonna do? Well, I've talked to, to the other people on various forms and what you simply will do is that you will adjust it in its regular hole until all free play is taken out and then you simply turn it in two to three turns, full turns, and that should leave you enough free play. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And after that's done, the clutch will be adjusted. Okay, I've got it adjusted. It's out as far as it'll go. All free play have been, has been eliminated. The, uh, the throw bearing is resting on the diaphragm fingers of the clutch that's inside here. And there is basically no free play at all. And inside the car, the clutch pedal will be right up against this rubber stopper. So now, theoretically, I can turn this back in two to three turns, full turns, uh, in, rotations back in, and then that should be the correct adjustment. Let's find out. 
Okay, getting back inside the car, man. This is tough in the back. Wow. Okay. Okay. This is the clutch pedal for the Z20. And as you can see, it's basically got no movement at all. It's, it's right up against the stopper. Oh. oh, and just as an aside here, I have recently put in some three-point more modern style seat belts for the front occupants of my car, just in the idea of safety. Uh, I've driven this car with its lap belts for many years, and I'm just not used to that. All my other cars, of course, you get used to the three-point uh, belts, and when you don't have it, you just feel a little uncomfortable. So I added this in, and this is Retro Belt, their universal system. And of course, it's supposed to fit into 1973 Camaros. And uh, unfortunately, it does not quite fit. I was going to make a detailed video about this installation, but I didn't really get a chance. I might go over it in more detail at some other point. But just in this video, I'm just going to mention this point right here. My seat is adjusted for my height, and it's hitting the, uh, the adjuster. This is the, uh, this is the retractor. That puts tension on the belt and retracts the seats, uh, retracts the seat belt, and will hold you in a crash. Uh, it actually touches the seat right here. Now, if I was taller, or if there was a taller person, they could not move the seat back any further. So it, it works out for me. But actually, as you can see, it is actually touching right there. So just a word: if you've got a, a second-generation Camaro, that the retro belt system will touch your seat. So, but it is relatively inexpensive and it does work for me. I do have uh, three point belts now. Okay, now using a wrench, we are going to shorten this uh, by two complete turns and see where we're at. Can I do this by hand or by, do I have to use a wrench? Let's see. So you can see the mark, the little C mark right here. So when that comes around again, that's one. Okay. Okay, I can do it. All right. Okay, there's the C mark again. That's one. A little looser. And a little easier to move now. Here comes the C mark. That's two. Now, you can see we have some looseness here. Now, is that enough? Hmm. Okay, I've added my clutch spring. That just fits into a hole up on the frame. Right up, right up, right up here, right up, right up here. And that just clears the headers. It just clears the headers right here and comes back to a hole on the top side. There's one hole on the top side of the uh, clutch uh, fork. And as you can see now that that pulls it back and so it stays. And then if I pull forward, you've got some slight movement. Now, I think that might be the clearance that we need from the, from the diaphragm finger so that There'll be just enough clearance so we won't have excessive wear on our throwout bearing. So I think I might be done, but there's one more measurement to be done, and that is we can measure at the clutch pedal how much movement there is. And I'll have to look in the book how much there should be. I think it's a half inch movement, um, a movement there uh, before you have the, like this will translate, this movement here will translate into a half inch at the at the clutch pedal. So we'll see, we'll see. Okay, according to the book, clutch pedal free play should be. Okay, according to the book, clutch pedal free play should be an inch measured from the center of the clutch pedal. So right now it's there, and then we move it. Okay, it's approximately there. That is 
an inch. Hold on, let's do this again. Uh, clutch pedal for each player should be an inch. It's up against the stopper right now. And, and, and in we go. Okay. That is three quarters of an inch. Let's try this again. Okay. Okay. All right. So the clutch pedal free play was about uh, almost an inch. I call that good. So now all we gotta do is tighten up this 9 16 inch lock nut and make sure that the shaft does not move while we do that. There we go. She's tight. That's the clutch adjustment done. All right, so that's how you adjust your clutch linkage on your second generation Camaro. I'm sure other older cars are very similar to this uh, but so I can only speak for one I have right here and that's my 1973 Camaro. So you can see it's pretty simple mechanical system how it works and uh, not too hard to do. So thank you for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time. Anyway, so thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you later. Anyway, so thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you later. Anyway, thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will...